Cast not away your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Anything that you do not do with confidence does not attract rewards. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has what? Great recompense of reward. Anything done without confidence lacks result. Only the confident are full of result. To be full of confidence is to be full of results. Positive results, of course. The moment you throw away your confidence, you have thrown away your output. Whatever we approach timidly, whatever we approach without assurance, without confidence, without deep conviction, does not yield commensurate or yield enviable results. That is why I said, cast not away thy confidence which has great recompense of reward. So any assignment you engage in in life, engage how? Confidently. Whether spiritual assignment, whether an academic assignment or academic pursuit, whether financial pursuit, whether career pursuit, whether marital pursuit, whatever you lack confidence in, you will be defeated in. Never embark on anything that you are not confident in. Hallelujah. Bishop David Oedipo said, confidence is the conqueror's backbone. As your spinal cord is to your life, so is confidence to your spiritual journey. The moment your confidence is taken away, your destiny is affected. Hallelujah. And that's what the devil did to Peter. After he denied Christ three times, the devil took um, tampered with his confidence. So he lost his confidence. And so even after he was away, Jesus had resurrected, he went back to fishing. Jesus had to come again to refire his confidence. Before he went back on the journey. Hallelujah. So anytime confidence is affected, destiny is affected. Goliath came out for 40 days and was shouting, Hey, anyone among you, come here. I will eat him like meat now. And the Bible said, Saul and all Israel, their hearts did what? Fainted. And the moment their hearts fainted, they lost the battle. But when David came, what did he tell them? He said, let none of you's heart fail because of him. In other words, don't lose your confidence. And David, who confronted Goliath confidently, the Bible said Goliath was coming towards David and David rushed at him. Amen. Confidently and brought Goliath down. So whenever we, are, we have any project, we must engage it confidently. We must do what? Engage it confidently. Therefore, it is your assignment never to allow anything to affect your confidence. Majorly, your confidence, not in yourself, but your confidence in God. That's the difference between the world and, and the kingdom. People in the world, they preach self-confidence. It's good to know yourself. It's good to understand yourself. It's, it's good to know your potential. But it's also good to understand that your potentials and everything you know about yourself is nothing without Him. As a matter of fact, the more of Him we know, the more of ourselves we know. Anything you know about yourself outside of Him will lead you into shame someday. Amen? So we, we, we locate God because in Him we find us. In Him we know about ourselves. So our confidence that we are talking about, I'm talking about, is not confidence in your, I can sing, I can preach, uh, I, can, I can read and understand, I can do this. Can, no, 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 no. We are talking about your confidence in the person that is backing you up. Your confidence in the Almighty God is the key to exploits and victories in life. That was why he said to Joshua, Hey, fear not, only be thou very courageous. He said it to him three times in Joshua chapter 1. Fear not, be courageous. Fear not, say you will divide the land for everybody. He said, Have I not commanded you that be not afraid? Three times, be of good courage. What was God trying to tell him? Be confident, I am here. Everywhere the soul of your foot tread upon, I will give it to you for a possession. It doesn't matter who is there, I am there. Hallelujah. And he went further in the verse 36 and said, For you have need of patience. So after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Hallelujah. There is usually a time 
gap between when we do his will and when we receive the promise. Not when we receive the answer, but when we receive the promise. The moment we begin to pray, God is a prayer answering God. He has answered the prayer. Amen. However, the receiving of the answers is timed. Hallelujah. For instance, you pray for a wife now. He has had you. But you are 15 years old. <laughs> so you can't receive the promise that time. <laughs> Amen. You can't. You are praying for a big estate. You are already you are age 20. Trying to understand your life. You don't even know what your purpose is. I need a big estate law. Big estate. I want to be a big estate mogul. And God said, I have answered you. But you can't manifest. If you manifest, you will squander it. You lack the knowledge, the capacity to manage it. The character to manage it. So it has been answered, but you, to receive the promise, there is a timing for it. Hello. Now, why am I saying this? When you pray, God has answered. But to receive the promise of our prayers, we must be patient. That's why I said, you have need of what? Patience. You have need of what? Patience. Because the season of patience is the season where God equips us to receive what he has already answered. Hello? You have need of patience. If you have prayed for a hundred souls, it has been answered. Amen? But the next service, you might not see hundred souls there. Hello? The next service, you might not see what? You might not see hundred people gather in the church at once. Then the Sabbath has answered it. There is a little time between a spiritual time in between when he, he, you pray that prayer and he answered and when you will receive the promise. Now, many things determine whether I receive the promise. Number one, we receive the promise by faith. Number two, we receive the promise also by fully trusting in his timing. Because we might be praying for 10,000 souls, God can give 10,000 souls to us. Amen? Because 100 is already small. 10,000 souls, Lord, give us 10,000. I say, yes, I've answered it. 10,000 souls granted. Amen? But if you stay like this and the next Sunday you see 10,000, where you won't be able to manage it. How many workers do we have here? They will trample on you. <laughs> How many of you are first timers? 10,000 first timers. The whole, all, I will leave the pulpit, leave the stage for first timers to. <laughs> they will rent canopies for first timers. You see? The structure to handle it. It's not yet there. So God said, I have answered. Put structures in place. Then you receive it. Hello? Are you listening? So any time in your prayer life, you lift up your voice and you are crying unto God. You say, you have need of patience. That after you have, you have spoken to him, you have done his will. And his will is that we should pray. He said, be, be anxious for nothing. But what? In everything with thanksgiving. And supplication, make known your request unto God. So, we make our request known to him. It's his will. However, you have need of patience to receive what he has already answered. Hallelujah. But people lack patience, stop praying. Amen? They do what? They stop praying. If I'm praying for a realm of the spirits, one year, two years, depending on the realm we are praying for, amen, depending on what you are looking for, and what you are desirous for. And you just keep there praying and praying. You have need of patience. Because when you began to cry on him, he has answered. He has seen your heart. However, he's preparing you for the anointing you are calling for. So that when the anointing comes, you can carry it. Now when the anointing comes, you will not lose your head. When the anointing comes, you will not start misbehaving. Though you have need of patience to know that he has already answered it. And he's only preparing you to receive what he has answered. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. What then is the wisdom? Your time of patience should be your time of personal preparation. Amen. I have prayed that I want to raise the dead. I have seen people near death come back to life. I have seen people the devil wanted to kill, we averted it. Amen. But I have not yet seen somebody really dead that personally I brought back to life. But I, I pray for that. I see it in revelations. I see that it will happen. I see again several times when I didn't think about it, myself step into an hospital and lay hands on everybody and they came back to life. At that time I saw that I didn't know I have anything about healing ministry in my life then. I've seen it. I prayed and asked God for dimensions that will wipe away the tears of people. He has answered. Amen. 
but he's preparing me to receive it. So while I am the patience there means be be patient for him to prepare you. The patience there is not saying that you should go and sleep, stop praying. It's not saying that you should just sit down doing nothing. What is simply saying, be patient with his preparations because he's actually preparing you to enter into what he has already answered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I already know where we are going in this commission. People say it, but I know it before they say it. Nothing anybody has told me that was surprising to me because I saw it before anybody started saying anything. And I'm still seeing it today about the commission. See, seeing what God is showing me about around the world by His mercies, by His privilege, by His grace. Amen. However, we can't wake up today and say we're opening five branches at once. Amen. Can God do it? Yes. Will God do it? Yes. Is He ready to do it? Yes. Has He done it? Yes. But to receive it on the surface of the earth, He said, Hey, I will take you to a season of patience, which is actually a season of preparing you. To receive what I've already answered. Rise up, let's pray. So don't be tired in prayer. Amen? Amen. Don't be tired in the place of Prayer. prayers. You pray, pray again. You are asking God for the realm of the Spirit. Continue. Amen? The more you pray, the more it prepares you. Preparing you for that. And when that anointing comes... That is why people don't understand. For some people, it takes three months. They are ready. Some one year. Some five years. Some eight. Some ten. There are things you ask of God, especially spiritual treasures, and He prepares you for quite some time. Amen. He just keeps preparing you. Oh yeah. One year, two years. You say, oh, but that person is working in that realm, but we are not. And God says, hey, he, has, he, he underwent or he has undergone his own training season, his own preparation season, and he has entered into it. I'm still with you. And as a matter of fact, you are not the same, so you don't need competition. How many of you know that tomato, how many months does it take for tomato to grow and harvest? Eh, Lawrence? Three months. You hear that? Three months. But by the time you harvest it, if you want to consume it, you do pot of stew. You give some, some people around you, or if you want to sell it, you sell it, you get some little money, bags of tomato. Is that not so? Check out now somebody who is planting cocoa. How many years? Five years. By that time, this guy has harvested three months. Three months, he might invest like two or three times in a year. You have not yet harvested one. The next one. The next one, the next one. What is happening to the tree? The cocoa tree is being given a body structure that will be able to produce something that is going to be um that is going to be massive because his destiny is a massive destiny. You cannot carry cocoa plant on tomato stem. So the five years is preparing it. Then by the time the five years come, one harvest surpasses the whole harvest that the man has been up. In fact, it makes this one become a millionaire. It begins to export. Have, have you seen export tomato? Eh? Tomato for you see that? You begins to export. All of a sudden, he realizes that the season where he had planted. The answer had come that when you sow, you will reap. But between sowing and reaping, there is a season of patience. And that season of patience actually a season of preparing you to enter into destiny. Hallelujah. So you want your stem to be heavy, your branches to be strong, so that they can carry cocoa or carry things that are heavier than that, then you have need of patience. Therefore, be patient and cast not away your if you lay hands on a sick person today and the person did not get healed that does not mean you should stop praying for the sick amen if you missed 
God gave you a word of knowledge and you misinterpreted it and you missed it. Or maybe you thought it was God but it was yourself and you missed it. That does not mean you should close the door to hearing the voice of God in your life. Hallelujah. Still do it confidently. Three days ago I was reading my Bible and I came across the passage. He said, let us therefore, Hebrews 4, 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. And God said, I want you to always come boldly. It's not everything you say I will ask, I will do immediately. I will answer you, but I won't do it immediately. But even though I didn't do it, just still come boldly. Be bold enough to know that I have it available. If it's the one for now, I give it to you. If it's the one for, I will prepare you for it. Hallelujah. Shall we lift up our voices? Speak to the living God right now. Speak to him. Speak to him. Is somebody speaking to the Lord? Let 
Fata Binos, Le Quatuata Tikos of Totus, Belegadia Preposuante Preputa, Jaquasia Tona, Eleberino Zatata, Maquasa Totosi, Leperetto Salivarota, In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Just two prayers and then we are out. One. Father, prepare me to receive what you have released. Father, Lift up your voice and pray. Pray for yourself. Father, prepare me to receive what you have prepared. Prepare me to receive what you have released. 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 Let's cut out and the bread Prepare me to receive what you have released, O God. Prepare me to receive what you have released, O God. La de Rosso Gorobosso de Gerebosso. Le Berega Bosso de Borobosso. Prepare me to receive what you have released, O God. Prepare me to receive what you have released, O God. Prepare me to receive what you have released. I know you have released, but I need to receive. Father, prepare me to receive what you have released. Sika la balagani, la balagani, la balagana. En prato sobre que te grebe con los alabados. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We're going to pray. Father, within the next two weeks remaining for this prayer and fasting, prepare us to receive the kind of multitudes that you have released. Are you ready to pray that prayer? In, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Ghost, in this city of Abuja, all over Dede, in Saburi 1, Saburi 2, Filindabu, all over Dede, all over Abuja city, Father, within the next two weeks, prepare us to receive the multitudes that you have released. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and Thank you, Lord. Thank you because of the preparation, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have received.